Welcome to Planet Horror with a review of Silent Hill Homecoming. Released in 2009 in Europe is the sixth installment in the Silent Hill series and was going to be called Silent Hill 5. You play as Alex Shepard who returns to his hometown of Shepard's Glen following being discharged from military service and spending time in a hospital for combat related injuries. Alex returns to his hometown of Shepherd's Glen only to find that his father and younger brother Joshua have vanished without a trace, along with pretty much all the previous residents of the town. He finds his mother in a depressive stupor, and Alex promises his mother that he will find his missing brother. While he searches, he slowly uncovers what happened to Shepherd's Glen and the dark secrets of the neighbouring town of Silent Hill. Developed by Helix Games, also developed games Killer Instinct and the 2014 Strider was the second game in the series not to be developed by Konami and the Japanese release of Homecoming was cancelled entirely. Samples of daily life were recorded for the sound effects. Akira Yamaoka says for example while he was staying in a noisy hotel he heard construction work going on nearby and someone banging on the hotel walls and he'd sample things like that and anything he thought would make people feel uncomfortable and the sounds in this game really do make you feel uncomfortable. The game starts with you being wheeled through a nightmarish hospital by a bloodstained surgeon and you can really feel the essence of films like Jacob's Ladder and perhaps Hostel as you're being led down a corridor with open doors to rooms with different tortures happening inside. The game is much more action orientated this time around and they made Homecoming fit nicely in with the rest of the series from the look of Alex to the ash fog that covers both Shepherd's Glen and Silent Hill the way the map works sound of picking up items and the reuse of familiar enemies for instance the skin dogs and the sexy faceless psycho nurses the nightmare world was done nicely and in the same kind of decaying peeling effect seen in the Sun Hill movie. In the first four Sun Hill games developed in-house at Konami, they paid close attention to detail with the characters, making sure their emotions felt believable. I wouldn't go as far as to say Homecoming had little attention paid to character emotions, but I don't think Homecoming shows the same level of attention to the subtle details as the games that came before it. I noticed there were a few audio glitches where sound effects would drop out for a while. Just see you later, goodbye. But they eventually came back. Lighting was really atmospheric, and while exploring, I'd catch a glimpse of a shadow in the corner of my eye, and I'd turn around really quick, ready to attack, only to be confronted by absolutely nothing. It kind of tries to get in your head that way, and make you expect enemies to come. But unfortunately, even though there were a few moments of tension, a lot of attempts to scare, especially early on in the game, were badly timed. The game felt, for the most part, quite relaxed. Enemies often turned up in places you would naturally expect them to be. And instead of being put off by having to fight the monsters, I think the game encouraged you to fight them, rather than just run away which I found was the best tactic in the early games. Combat with certain monsters I felt was either overly difficult to the point of frustration, like for instance with the Needlers, I had the most trouble with those, where you had to learn their strikes before you could kill them effectively, or just far too easy, like the Siams, which look big and scary and often burst through solid walls, but could be taken down with a couple of bullets. The 
Though occasionally you get a glimpse of some unfinished textures, I quite like the graphics and the old film effect they used during the cutscenes and sometimes in the other world. Also the Alcatraz prison was neat. And the gore was quite nicely done. I enjoyed the rusty, blood-stained otherworld the most. I was stunned at the time by how awesomely hellish they made things, though I found the grossness of the design more intriguing than frightening. The game has five different endings, each with their own separate unlockable bonuses. The musical score was excellent, just like in the early installments of Silent Hill, and the storyline was kind of interesting. The game offers up some memorable parts, and I don't see a reason to avoid this one.